Hello. Welcome to Promise Resource Network. I'm Jane, and this is Expansions, where we get to dive into the spiritual dimension of wellness. I noticed as I was hopping on that there's something happening. I don't know if it's the way the sun is coming in this room or what, but there's a piece of hair. Um, but like the color of my skin keeps rapidly changing from one color to another color. So I'm putting it out there that I'm aware that I look like I have Technicolor skin today. So that's a thing. Um, so I'll give everyone a moment to tune in and to settle in. And while I do that, I just want to share some phone numbers with you. Um, I want to share the front desk number with you to Promise Resource Network. I know they're not open right now because you can see that they close at 430. But if it's something, if, if you're interested in maybe being a peer support, being a service, volunteering, donating, um, or, or any, you want more information about Promise Resource Network, the beginnings of it, the starting, anything, call the welcome desk. Kim is going to be the one to answer the phone and take your call and guide you in the right direction. So the number to that is 704-390-7709. So call that number if you need it or want it. And another number that I want to share is the warm line. So the warm line is free and the number to that is 833-390-7728. So you can call that number if you just want a listening ear. You maybe don't even have a real reason or purpose other than you just need to get something off of your chest, off your heart. You want to share something really great. You have a question. You don't know where to turn. You need some more support with just a listening ear. Um, please feel free to call this number, share this number, give it to whoever you want. You know, we are still going through a stressful time in life because it's it, it's life. So life is stressful sometimes. And if you just want to make sure that, that you're handling it, maybe in a way that's in your highest good and you just want a neutral witness, maybe call the warm line, please. So you can take a screenshot of that, write that number down. Um, you can always rewind this, I know. So I want to hop back onto this part so that you know what it is you're tuning into now. Um, oh, hey, I want to say hey to Charles, who was just apparently near me. I didn't even know. Um, good evening to my mother who's joining us. Roberta is here. Hey, Alan. It's so good to see you all on here. I love when you all tell me you're here. It really just, I don't know. I feel more connected. I like it. I like it. I don't know what that voice was, but eh, it was a thing. So I am going to light my wee bit of sage. I got a new sage. It's like sustainably grown and stuff. And it came um, more finely chopped than I'm accustomed to. Like normally I get it in like bigger pieces. Um but I really like the way this one smells and the way it burns. It feels really good. Hey, Travis, how are you? It's good to see you on here. Mm. So y'all, how are you doing? How are you feeling? How does your energy feel? How does your energy feel? How does your light body feel? We're going to get all types of quantum up in this conversation today. So I'm setting the mood, getting my, my Palo Santo and Sage going. And I want to know, seriously, seriously, how's your energy body feeling? How does your energy feel? Do you feel, do you feel constricted? Do you feel expanded? Do you feel like you're vibing high? Do you feel like you're vibing low? Kind of like what's your energy field feeling like? Um, Roberta, I'm assuming that with, because you got another five applications done, either you may feel like I feel tired now, or you feel like you still have this momentum going. Like, how does your light feel? How does your energy field feel? Expanded, little, big. Um, Charles is tired as a big wheelbarrow day. So, so you're, so you're, so your energy field is maybe <clears throat> feeling a little bit smaller, right? You're kind of taking it inward. Mom's energy is feeling mediocre, you know, maybe just like, kind of neutral, 
right? I don't feel really expanded. I don't feel really dense. I just kind of feel present, right? Um, <clears throat> Roberta says, um, definitely feeling like she's vibing high. Gotcha. Travis is feeling good. Not too high, not too low. So Travis is feeling the Goldilocks frequency. <laughs> That's what I call that. The mediocre frequency, the not too high, not too, not too low. I'm like, That's, I'm feeling a little Goldilocks frequency up in here. Just kind of present. And, and none of this is good or bad. I think that it's just a really um, beautiful way to check in with your energy field. Because that is a part, to me, of spirituality. Um, Alan's feeling good, have an unusually busy and productive day. Look at that. So does your energy field feel bigger? Like, do you feel more vibrational? Do you feel more because you're more productive and being busy? Um, so, um, you know, it's interesting. I've definitely um, been feeling high frequency and today was my first day without any caffeine. Like I've been doing black tea since, I don't know, was it right when COVID kind of started? Cause I was like, Hey y'all, let's all do lemon water and drink black tea. <laughs> so I've been feeling still wanting to drink black tea this whole time. So today was my first day without caffeine and I'm more aware of my energy without having caffeine. So I think that feels pretty interesting. Um, Roberta, it sounds like you're feeling some gratitude right now. You had some electricity itch issues that have been solved. So that's good. That's, that's a feeling of relief right there, right? Feeling blessed, she says. Um, I want to say hey to Kim, who's on here. Kim Porter, she's going to be the one to answer your call. If you call the welcome, that's the slam. Um, so yeah, let's, um, let's, let's connect first. Can we, can we, can we, um, Ooh, actually I have, I have an experience. Y'all want to do an, ex have an experience real quick. Um, so, so just feel this. Okay. So take a deep breath in and just let it go and just feel your energy. Okay. So maybe you tune into the innermost part of your body. Maybe it's along your spine and maybe you can feel a vibration or a frequency. Maybe you can sense your skin and almost like a little electricity on it or the air blowing on it or sweat upon it. Um, Maybe you can feel your energy field outside of your skin. Maybe you can actually feel how big and expanded you are. You know, just check in and just feel your energy. Just be still with you for a moment. Okay. So now... I would like for you to take another deep breath in and just sigh it out and start to become aware of your breath flowing in and out. And can you slow your breath down just a little? Maybe by slowing it down, it means you deepen your breath. Maybe your breath broadens and expands even more. Maybe your breath goes deeper beyond your chest space and into your belly. Maybe your belly expands with your breath. Deepening the breath by allowing the shoulders to soften when you exhale. Feeling the gravitational pull of the earth with every exhale. Notice how big and wide your breath can get and how small and hollow you become when you exhale. Feel the length of your spine and just feel your breath. 
Feel how the back of your shoulder blades broaden when you take a breath in and how they melt down your back when you exhale. Take a big full breath in and let it go. And so now I ask, how does your energy feel? How does it feel now? How do you feel now compared to the first, just becoming aware of it? My energy feels bigger. I feel like I am holding more energy, more light in my like physical space and in my field of space. So I'm curious if you'll share, if you did that breathing exercise, how you feel now. Alan says he hadn't had caffeine in over a month and he misses that energy boost. I'm learning that if I do different breathing techniques that I can get that energy boost. So I don't have to rely on a source outside of myself to feel bigger or more energetic or energized or alive, alive, enlivened, lively. So I'm curious y'all like, did anyone do it? Did y'all, did y'all try the breath stuff just then? Did you notice how you feel? If you feel any differently? Robert, let's see. Ah, Roberta's feeling energized. JC, how are you? I'm happy you're here. JC says feeling viable without direction. Ah. I like that, <clears throat> that I call that feeling the spaciousness, you know, it's like, I feel the spaciousness. That's how I say it. I like that. I like that word. And Travis feels more energy and relaxed and calm. Yeah, me too. I feel like I feel more here. I feel more present. Um, hey, Brandy, welcome. I'm glad you just got here. Um, yeah, Alan says he'd like to get breathing energy boost. I don't feel that right now. So a way to get a really big energy boost is to breathe intentionally, right? Breathe bigger, breathe deeper, let the body set, settle down. Um, Charles says feeling more oxygenated, but I'm still ready for a nap. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that a lot of times um, doing breathing, it can give us energy and maybe that energy is a mental clarity kind of energy so that we can get home safely to take a nap, <laughs> you know? Um, so I'm glad you feel more oxygenated. That, that's a good feeling, right? We, we need that oxygen stuff. Brandy, I was, um, I, Brandy's asking what the question was. Um, I had asked everyone how their energy was feeling at the top of the hour, just check in. And then I went through a little breathing exercise and I'm checking in now with how does your energy feel now? Um, so that was the question. So um, if some of you, and I don't want to get into it because I just made an Instagram live video, which I haven't done an Instagram live ever. So that was kind of funny. Um, if you can watch it to the end, the end of it's really funny when I'm like, I don't know what button to push. Turn it off. Anyway, eh, what do you do? Um, but there's a lot of solar energy coming in, right? So we have a lot of light energy coming in. So if we talk about this on the spiritual, in the spiritual dimension, right? We have a lot of source energy, sun, right? It's a source of energy. We have source energy coming in. So if we have all of this light energy coming in, how can we integrate source energy, right? Very double entendre here, right? Like it's, 
how do we actually integrate all the photon energy and all the, the, the cosmic energy and the magnetic waves and the gravitational waves and the light waves that are coming in with all of these solar flares? Like, how do we actually integrate that into our physical? And then, because all the answers are going to be the same, when you think about integrating um, source energy, you know, the source of all that is, you know, the God source energy, the Jesus energy, the Buddha energy, you know, how do I integrate the light of, of my highest self? You know, how do I integrate the light of, of the angels into my field or the, the galactics or the ancestors or the ancients? You know, how do I actually integrate that light into my day, into my life? into who I am in this world. So I'm curious, because I always start off with a curiosity. Um, have y'all had any experiences where you felt that you uh, integrated light into your body, your mind, your spirit, into your, your life? Um, has anyone ever experienced um, feeling the Holy Spirit, um, getting a massive download um, or inspiration, uh, a healing? Has anyone experienced the healing where someone uses energy or you used energy? Whether it was, you know, you went to an infrared sauna, um, someone that does quantum work, Reiki, um, or you just, you know, maybe you met a guru and they said something that was just so profound that you felt this wave of light, of source kind of move through you. I'm curious, has anyone had that experience and would you be willing to share anything about that? Um, I am shuffling cards because I haven't done this in a while and I want to pull one by the end of the, the hour because I think it's fun. So... Hold one, set it to the side. Because I have stories of how I have felt it, and I would really like to know if anyone else has, has had an experience with integrating a light, um, integrating light into your body, and what that felt like, what that experience was like, um, if you've had a healing. Um, and I'll share with you one of mine. Oh, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm getting responses. Thanks, y'all. Ah, Alan says, sorry to say, I've not had that experience yet. And, and if you don't think you've had that ex this experience, I would like to invite you to look at it in a way that maybe you have and you didn't recognize it. Um, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, ah, JC says, I feel like I have a lot of stagnant energy that I would have to get out before I could allow new light. Like I need a soul enema. <laughs> That's funny. I visualize pink light for healing. It makes me feel warm as if I'm in a womb when I practice. Ah, that's nice. Pink can be, um, energetically speaking, can be a symbol of the heart. Actually the heart chakra, even though a lot of cultures see that as, uh, sorry, a green light, um, but pink can still be the heart area. It's a, it can also be the, the crown chakra or even like a higher outer chakra. Um, maybe you have, Alan. Um, and I'm so, excuse me. I don't know what's it. I'm integrating light. I don't know what's going on about your hair, air movement. <laughs> um, Interesting. I want to, I want to speak to what you said, JC, about, um, feeling like you have a lot of stagnant energy that you'd have to get out before you can allow new light in. I think that that is a very common perspective and thought and belief. I can say me too, that I definitely felt that way. It was kind of like, you know, well, when I lose 10 pounds, then I can be in a relationship right? When I retire, then I can be happy. When I get the gunk out, then I can get the new light in. When I, um, when 
when, when, then, you know, when I, then this, and when we do that, when we have that belief system, what I'm saying to the universe and to, to me is that I am not worthy of, and I don't deserve this yet because these other things have to happen first, which puts conditions on love, right? The light that we're talking about, this, this big light, it's getting this flood of love, this flood of high energy, high frequency. It feels like you get whooshed with love or grace or compassion. You have a healing in this very spiritual sense. You get moved by the spirit and it feels um, like you're being held. It feels like peace. It feels like love. It feels like bliss. It feels like euphoria. It feels something really big in the heart space. So to say, I have to get rid of stuff, whatever that is, right? I have to get rid of traumas and behaviors and just empathic stuck energy that I got from other people, epigenetics from my storylines. I have to get rid of all this stuff around before I will allow, welcome, receive source energy in, right? So when, when I realize that, then it's like, okay, well, now I can start to shift that out and say, no, I deserve to feel it like that, period. I don't have to get the stuff out. It's kind of like if you've ever used Drano, which I don't recommend or encourage ever. Animals on the earth don't like it. But anyway, if you've ever used Drano, the point is so that you don't have to pull the gunk out first, but that the, the, the cleaner goes into the pipe. And that is what clears out all the density, the yuck, the muck, the junk, right? So glad you said that. Um, <laughs> Roberta says her favorite color has always been pink until the fifties, uh, until her fifties. And then she started to integrate purple. I always, always love pink and purple. Um, and Alan says, I dearly want to have a spiritual connection. I say, connect with love, 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 love. Love for your strangers, love for your neighbors, love for yourself and everything in between. Love the plants, the trees, the earth, the water, the air, the everything, everything, everything. The more love you feel in your heart for anything and everything, the more connected to light we are, to the light, to the spirit, to spirituality, to, to the wholeness, right? To the holiness. Um, Brandy says... I'm going to say my first cacao ceremony in December. Yay! I got to facilitate that. Y'all so excited that Brandy was there. Y'all didn't even know. Anyway, um, I went in with chains on my soul, came out of the ceremony, chains broken, and, an, and a new beginning to my spiritual experience. The light was warm. I was needing more, and I've learned so much from December. Oh, I love that. Yay! Very often, sometimes it takes us getting out of our mind, you know, our mind loops, to let that light in, right? So that's why plant medicines are so supportive. You know, cacao is something I've been using in ceremonies for a few years now because it gets the mind out of the space and it floods our body with um, the, the natural chemicals that are in us and the cacao that feels like bliss and euphoria. And so it has a lot of like heart healing. Whenever we heal the heart, we start to expand it bigger and wider. We let more of that spiritual light in and it does feel warm doesn't it i've never had a spiritual like experience where i'm like oh that felt cold ever ever like when i'm working with clients and doing energy work like i will get waves of heat go through i have tears come out because i feel like overwhelming love or compassion so good i'm so glad i'm so glad and that that right there you know the feeling of of, of that shift you know when you integrate the light in um I'm going to ask you a question, Brandy, to that. Let me see. Okay. So, Brandy, here's a question. Um, you said that, you know, you had felt like you had these chains on your soul. And then during the ceremony, like the chains came off and you, you felt this warm, good, warm light, you know, and you feel like you had a new beginning, right? A new, a, a new, a new lease on life. So integrating that light right? Into your daily life. Is there anything that you could share or speak to on that while I check in and see what um, other people are saying? JC, JC says, um, 
it's weird how something that has no physicality, like thoughts and behaviors, can feel so heavy and have physical weight. Pretty trippy. So I do think it's an issue of feeling deserving of the light. Yes. Yes. So much. Yes. Yep. Because that's the thing. We are made of light. We are made of more light and sound than matter. Period. You have an atom. The nucleus is a teeny, 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 tiny little thing. And it's surrounded by all of the, the energy field. That's us. The matter that we are is so minimal. And when we have heavy thoughts, right? Dark thoughts, um, negative thoughts, right? Thoughts that aren't serving us. Thoughts of lack, judgment, stagnation, um, fear. You know, these thoughts slow our physical body down. Literally, it slows the way the light moves throughout our entire physical system. And so we start to feel heavy. We feel dense. We don't feel. And then it's like, well, of course, I don't feel like I deserve the light because I have all these reasons and my body hurts and I feel heavy and I feel dense and I don't like it. And then, like none of that feels like love, right? So that's a, that's a brilliant and beautiful awareness and reflection, JC. I'm so glad you shared that. So then how do you integrate more light with that awareness? That's your question, JC. And I know you said something else down here, but I haven't gotten to it yet. Um, Charles says, experienced it a couple of times. One time I really needed some forgiveness. I had a long inner conversation with God, source, whatever you feel comfortable calling it, and myself asking for that forgiveness. Then there was that time at the bag lady with Nami and my favorite guy moving and playing with the light, moving it back and forth between us. Oh yeah, I forgot that we did that. Yes. When we were like literally moving the light back and forth. Um, yes. Thank you for sharing that, Charles. Definitely like think about, you know, it's like, okay, what light, what is that light, that spiritual, that holiness, that wholeness, the love, the source, the light, you know, if I'm going to integrate it, that means I'm going to pull it into my body. Sometimes we got to ask for it. Sometimes we have to tell ourselves that I have, I am permissing myself. I grant myself permission to feel the light, to receive the light, to be the light, to let this light move through me, to me. Like to, to speak it out, to ask for it, to, to put it out there as a demand, as a command, you know, beyond the world of intention. I think that that's when stuff really starts to like flow through because then God, source, universe, whatever you want to call it, literally is like, okay, they're not playing. Also on the quantum level, we're actually magnetizing it to us because we have literally opened that door to say, yes, source, I want to feel your ever loving presence. As I scroll down. Um, oh God, Roberta had a all pink room. I have a pink bedroom now. <laughs> um, yes. JC says my trauma doesn't like the light. It's like a vampire. Yes. Yes. For sure. Like our traumas, our traumas are the experiences that we've had period. The end, it is a reality of what happened, right? Well, what happened was this trauma. So we can see it. We can choose to see our traumas in any kind of way we want. We have that free will to view our traumas with our mind any way we want. We can view our traumas as lessons learned, as gifts received, as spaces of growth. We can also see traumas as me being a victim. I am now ashamed. I'm the one to blame. I deserve the pain. That sounded like a little rap song right there. Like, oh, I'm going to rewind that. I'm like, what? Anyway, um, so the mental game with our traumas will either keep them heavy, further sucking any energy out, or the traumas can actually alchemize and blossom and turn into fertile soil for the light to come in so we can integrate it and be the blossomed human that we are made to be. So definitely, you know, trauma doesn't like, like trauma is the shadow. Trauma is going to hide from the light. Trauma is going to be the one that says, yeah, this is why you should go drinking, you know, or you don't deserve to feel good. You messed up again, didn't you fool? You know, like that's what our traumas do to us. They, they keep these messages on repeat by replaying over and over and over again. 
And a lot of these traumas, I just want to put this reminder out there that a lot of the traumas that we have experienced, one, that's a whole set of traumas in DNA and genetics and Jane's body, right? In your body. Now look at both of your parents. They had their own set of traumas and dramas and stories and genetics that came together to form you. Look at their parents. They had a whole other set of genetics and beliefs and dramas and traumas and all of the things. When they came together, they made your parents. So, so think about all of the buildup that you are carrying around in your physical body because your genes dictate what your physical is and does. And all that is, is in your, your mental body, right? Your neural pathways that just keep saying these things that are conscious or subconscious. In your emotional body, you know, why am I always sad and crying? Well, when I look back, you know, when my mom was always sad and crying, and so was hers, and so was hers, and so was hers. Or when my father was always doing these things, and his, oh, okay. You know, but my life experience was fine. But you still may be manifesting from traumas and, and storylines and experiences that not necessarily happen to you, but to from, from your ancestors, you know? So if we can integrate more of the light into all that I am, into my body, by eating well, by thinking light thoughts, not by bypassing, but like looking these traumas dead square in the face, being like, I'm going to love you, I'm going to love you, and I don't know how, but I'm going to grow from you. You're not going to hold me down anymore and suck me dry, you know? Um, so I love that you said that. Yes, Roberto, next time you're in Charlotte, I have a cacao ceremony coming up on May 15th. It's cacao and ecstatic dance. And it's going to be supporting um, a couple of nonprofits that I adore. So anyone that's going to be in town in Charlotte, North Carolina for that. Okay. So when I had asked Brandy, you know, how does this look? You know, she's, she felt this flood of light. How is this integrated into her life? So she says, I've been learning, sorry, I've been leaning toward Buddhism. My two children with high ADHD, um, I'm calmer and I hate to say this, but I can actually handle them. Yes. Right. The feeling of peace. It's like, oh yeah. It's a thing. And they're probably handling you better. Um, going outside, watching the trees blowing. I just can't get enough. Yes. I can't wait to learn more. Yes. Um, she says, yeah, I love that statement. Um, yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's interesting, right? When we can integrate all of this light in, everything around us tends to change. We start seeing more of the good in others, the beauty in nature, the, the magic and wonder of the wind. You know, look at back, look back at any indigenous peoples that knew this stuff because they were living this life of, of like pure human, you know, without like TV and media and propaganda and government and politics. And you should do this and you should do that. And you need this big drug pharmacy thing because you aren't good enough. And now you have 50,000 side effects and now you're taking 80,000 more pills. Let's benefit the insurance companies and big pharma. <laughs> I always digress to that because I think that the system is just a joke and it's what's created all of us in the first place for us to grow through. Um, well, back to what Brandy was saying, like, you know, it literally changes the way we see everything, the way we experience things, the way other people experience us, you know, JC says, I'm going to date, I'm going to date myself. I guess I need to tell my Carol Ann, go to the light. Yes. Carol Ann, Carol Ann, go to the light. Seriously, the more I can feel love in my heart, right? Like for real, the more I'm integrating the light. I taught um, about the heart chakra actually yesterday, um, going through the energy centers and was really, we were diving into the Anahata chakra and the heart has a totally different EMF field, an electromagnetic frequency field that emanates from it bigger than anything else. When I, and it's all about like love and relationship, relationship to self, to others, to life on earth, to the earth itself. If I am fully or mostly disconnected to love, I'm disconnected from the earth. I never go outside. I drink out of plastic water bottles. I don't recycle them. Everything I eat is a McMeal. 
I don't grow anything. Nothing is organic. I am disconnected further and further from the source that feeds my spirit and body. The further disconnected I am from life in general, the further away I am from feeling the magnificence of the source light of, of love of that relationship with something bigger. Cause if I don't pay any heart mind to anything bigger than me, I won't feel the love from the heart of everything that is bigger than me, you know, from a community, from this country, from the earth herself, from the sun. I won't feel it, you know, it won't resonate as deeply. So <laughs> Roberta had a canopy bed. I never had a canopy bed. That just reminded me of a story that really creeps me out. I kind of want to share it. Y'all want to hear a creepy story? <laughs> so this one time, um, uh, I was dating this guy and he was telling me about someone that like one of his really good friends, she had wanted to make like a canopy bed. So she went out in the woods and like gathered all these beautiful like sticks and twigs and all the things and she had put them together. So it made like a canopy bed and you know, great. She goes to bed, she wakes up the next day and like webs were all over it because there were still spideys and bugs on the sticks. <laughs> Could you imagine? I'd have freaked out big time. Whoa. Anyway, just wanted to share that story. So here's a question. What are ways to integrate more light into you? Like, what are some ways that you can do this? Um, I am a huge fan of plant medicine. Like, huge. To me, plant medicine, plant Oh, JC, she never saw the Blair Witch Project, huh? No, ma'am. I know, right? Um, plant medicine, you know, everything that is alive is a, is a consciousness, meaning it is doing what it's doing without thinking about it. You know, my cells are dividing, but I'm not telling them to. My heart is beating, but I'm not telling it to. I am respirating right now, and I'm not telling Jane, you need to breathe now. Jane, breathe. Although we breathe consciously, it's a whole other ballgame. But like there's this infinite intelligence, a consciousness that is controlling, for lack of a better word, all that I am. Same thing with the trees. The tree's not thinking, hmm, how deep do I need to put my roots? It just does. You know, the, the flower that blooms, it just does it. It's consciousness. So everything that has consciousness, it just knows what to do by the nature of itself. So to me, when I ingest or use plant medicine, I attune, I become more coherent with the plant and the information that it has for me, whether it's a consciousness medicine or physical medicine, a spiritual medicine, whatever, I get out of it big time medicine. It's like cacao. Um, I've used other medicines that um, I don't think that I'm supposed to mention on here, so I won't. Um, but, you know, eating organic, eating fruits and vegetables, like literally using the medicine of the plants that are still alive. You know, today I literally was plucking fennel and sorrel leaves and wrapping them up and eating them with children and tell, and they were, we were like, this tastes so good. It's so vibrant and alive. It tastes so good. So green. And I was telling them like, we're actually eating light, you know, we're, we're attuning to the plants. It's now medicine for us, you know? So to me, plant medicine has been a really beautiful way to integrate the light. Sometimes it just shuts up my looping mind. That's always thinking about what's next. What am I going to do? What's going on? Ooh, how does this work? It just kind of like stops all the chitter chatter to where I can just be. And I think I talked about this a couple weeks ago that when we can just 
be in spaciousness. I think it was last week when we can just be in spaciousness. That's when we start to get more integration, information, downloads, connections to source, which is that light. So when I was asking, you know, like, how do you integrate light? Um, JC says, surrounding yourself with others that want and appreciate the light. Yes. Being around reflections. Yeah. If you, know, like, if you go around, you know, Edna and Edna is a grumble, butt. she is just a Debbie Downer grumble, butt, hates life, always complains, miserable cuss, you know, eat nothing but her honey buns and Twinkies. You're not going to feel real good. You're not going to feel real vibrant. Like you're just not because we're, we're all connected on an energetic level. So definitely being around others who are more of a had that can hold more light. You know, if you're around someone that eats healthier, that is, has been in nature, that is connected to something bigger, that, that has joy in their life, that plays, that dances, that sings, that laughs, you, you kind of, you feel that. And then when you're by yourself, it's an opportunity. Like when I'm by myself, it's an opportunity for me to be like, I felt really good when I was around this person. Well, how are they being? Like, what were their ways of being that, that felt so good to me? Now, if I'm not going to tell myself, well, Jane, you, you should be like them. Rather, if I could tell myself, hey, you know, I noticed that they laughed a lot. And, I'm, you know, I haven't really laughed in a long time. Maybe I want to see if I can laugh more. Yeah, you know, then that's me consciously using inspiration from others um, to to integrate more light. I love that, JC. Um, let's see. I thought my hair, of reverse says, I thought my hair was around my throat. So I went to remove my hair from around my throat, but it wasn't my hair. It was a giant spider. Ah! And then went into her face and freaked out. Ah! <sighs> I had to breathe through that, Roberta. That was intense. Um, <laughs> yeah. Talking about um, plant medicine, Alan says that he's got a wonderful family of green plants in my home, including coffee tree. Wow, that's so cool. Um, and the green plants, you know, whether we can eat them, right, plant medicine, whether we put them on our bodies, right, CBD ointments, um, tea tree is antibacterial, antifungal, um, clove is antibacterial, you know, whether we put them on our body or we ingest them, sometimes just being around them. And letting the oxygen that they're producing feed us, <laughs> huge. Has anyone, have y'all ever been to one of those salt rooms? Do y'all have any Himalayan salt lamps around? That ionizes the air, literally makes it more positive. Not only that, but it clears out pollutants and pollens, pollutants and pollens out of the air. Like it cleans the air. Salt, Himalayan salt. That is, that, that's a way to integrate more light using na nature, you know, like nature is really powerful y'all. Oh, Roberta Sor Sorrel. Yeah. You spelled it right. And I'm, I keep pr pronouncing it differently. It's, it's a type of a lettuce leaf and it tastes kind of like a soury lemon. It's really good. And then I just had fennel leaves and just, I took the fennel leaves and put it in a sorrel leaf and wrapped up the sorrel leaf and was eating it. Like I didn't even need it, like put in it. And it was just so good. Um, yes, yes. Brandy says, I'm going to stop drinking coffee as much and drink more herbal tea. That I'm telling you, that's a way to integrate more light. That is that right there is such a way to integrate more light, especially because not just our herbal teas better for our body, our mind, <laughs> our energy field. Um, not saying that caffeine or coffee is bad. However, the way it's processed here, it's more chemicals and it's actually not, it's not so good for the brain. Um, but you know, make a ritual out of making the tea. You know, I, you know, I put the tea kettle on, so I like to hear the whistle and then I pour it in the cup and then I measure it out and I have my, like a loose leaf tea thing and I put it in there and I put the little honey in it or whatever. And then I sit with it in a certain space where I can like look outside or look at a piece of art if the weather's not effective, like I can't be outside, you know? So when we create space to take ritual, we are, we are giving ourselves light. <laughs> We're actually like allowing ourselves to integrate more light 
we start to feel more peaceful. We start to feel more whole, more connected, connected to our body, to our breath, to the medicine of the tea, of the plant. And every time we do that, we're connecting back with source, right? We're connecting back with source, the source of me, the source of love, the source of peace, the source of the beauty of the plants, the planets. It's good stuff. Um, yes, Alan says he's, I am too, says he's very sensitive to the moods of people around me. If you are an empath and you're sensitive to anyone else's energy, moods, ways of being, I am just going to say, envision a bubble of energy around you where nothing but high frequency love and better, higher, more get in. And that's it. You can make this bubble white, clear, pink, yellow, green, blue, whatever you want. I wouldn't make it black. Just, it's, it's a different quantum. You don't want that. Um, but like you can actually envision an energy bubble around you and just focus on the light that you are, that you're shining out. And if someone is walking around, just t tune in to what is their energy color, right? Does it feel good? Does it not feel good? If it feels good, then say, you know what? I will welcome your energy in. And if it doesn't feel good, you can, you don't have to say this out loud, but you know, I don't welcome your energy in. I love you. I love you human. And I don't, I don't welcome your energy into my field. So that could help Alan. Um, yes. Yes. Roberta says she's cut um, down and drinks um, anise tea. Yes. With a metal straw. Very earth friendly. Yes. Definitely. Y'all, please. If y'all drink with straws, please use reusable straws. Please from the earth, from the animals, from anything that is in a waterway that lives there, please, for the love of all that's holy, stop using disposable straws. Just don't need to. Buy a straw, keep it, put it in your back pocket. If you're going to go out, put it in your car, get a couple, um, say no, you know, like, it's kind of up to us now to remember that, like, oh, wait, we're stewards of this earth, and she's a big, beautiful mother that is full of love and light for us. Uh, we should probably not shit on her. Um, Yes. Yes. JC says, um, when asking, like, hey, like, how do you integrate more light into your life? JC shares, surround yourself with things that nurture your light. Turn off the news, social media, and do those things that make you feel light. Yes, monitor what you let in your eyes and your ears. Yes. Awareness. So many people literally just turn on the TV and it's just like, like 10 hours later they blink. Or they turn on the TV and they eat mindlessly taste good eventually they get full they can't even tell that they're full because their mind is busy doing something else not able to focus fully on the sensations of their body yeah definitely surround yourself with the things that nurture your light surround yourself that are naturally more light you know go into the sun right get into the water give hugs you know look at yourself in the mirror and look at your own eyes and speak to yourself in a way that's kindness and loving and just, I don't know, don't be a turd to yourself, right? Brady says, I got a huge one. Did you get a huge straw? I don't think that's what you meant. Um, yes, Cyril and Fennel, yes. Um, Charles says he did the salt room thing in Asheville. He says, relaxing, but interesting watching the people there for treatment, jockeying for a position around the atomizer. <laughs> I bet. I'm here for healing. Get out of the way. I got dibs on that seat. Mm -hmm. They forget. I think that many times we as humans forget, right? It's, it's like we go through these phases, right? We're, we're always in a cycle of growing and healing and expanding, right? Letting more light in. And then it's like, okay, I, I had this flood of light. You know, I did a cleanse. I'm getting ready to do a cleanse, y'all. I'm so excited. You know, we, we do a cleanse and we feel really good and we keep it up for a while. And then, you know, we start to kind of lapse and we start to eat a pizza here and there or this, that, and here and da, 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 da. And then we're starting to kind of get icky again, right? And so we didn't lose all the life that we, that we got. We didn't lose the health benefits. It's just that the drain started to get a little bit gunky again, right? So we do another cleanse. 
or we take another vacation or we take another break, you know, we, we, we go back. And I think that what happens oftentimes is that we forget about, we don't, we don't know how to be mindful. Okay, great. So now I'm mindful. Everything changes, right? Okay, great. And then things kind of start to, you know, kind of go back, not down, but they just, they're, they're not as vibrant. And so it's like, okay, well, I'm going to start using holistic things. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm starting to drink and eat healthier, you know, more plants and vegetables and fruit stuff. And I'm feeling good. Awesome. And, and then we kind of start to, to drop back down and, and we go through this ebb and this flow. And there's this point where we look to outside sources to support the light, right? I go to the outside source and I eat plant life, right? I take outside of Jane light, put it in. I go outside of Jane to the sunshine. I let the sun in. I drink water that I literally let sit in the sun. So it charges. And if there's any chlorine in the water, it evaporates highly encouraged. And don't drink out of plastic either. If you don't have to, please drink out of glass or something else. Um, you know, so I take the outside source of this charged water and I drink it. And oftentimes we forget that we are also a source of light, that we are a fractal of source, that we are the source light. So sometimes when we remember that, then we just start to amplify this from the inside out, right? Going back to the, how do I talk to myself? How do I treat myself? How do I see myself? Am I really loving my body? Am I honoring my body? You know, or am I pushing others out of the way because my body needs this more than you? You know, at that point, I'm, I'm not even being a kind expression. So then there's like kind of a wonkiness on the inside. All that from what you shared, Charles. Hope that was good. <laughs> um, Charles or Alan says he has two salt lamps, but don't know about their benefits. Yeah, I say use them. Yeah, they clear the air. They create a higher frequency energy in the home space. If anyone has any breathing problems, any heart chakra issues, maybe there's some like deep seated grief, anything in this heart area, the, the salt lamp literally will help to heal that. It's not going to be a magic wand and it helps to support it. Yes. JC says, remember the things you enjoyed before your trauma, the music, the games, revisit those things. Yes, indeed. And check this out. I just had a, um, a hypnotherapy session last week. Um, and it was a happy childhood regression. And I got to remember, um, my, like from, from my perspective, my traumas began when I was like really young. So for me to go back to happy childhood memory, I don't really have that many cause they are always like surrounded with something not so good. Um, it's like, yeah, we were all having fun in the yard. And then my brother punched me, <laughs> you know, or like whatever, I don't know. Um, so I got to revisit some really early childhood infant stuff and it really cleared so much of that, so much of that stuff for sure. But you try to remember those things, you know, and if you don't remember a time, you know, maybe you don't have the best memories of your childhood and you don't have many memories of laughing and playing and all of those things, make them up in your head, like envision you as a child playing and laughing and playing games and, and dancing and jumping for joy and being free. Just imagine yourself as a child, whether it was a reality or not. And just see how that integrates more light into who you are now. Um, <laughs> Alan says, sometimes I wonder why people like me so much. Am I giving off positive energy? Um, yes. 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 Because you are the light. You are the source of love. You're the source of it. You know, when we integrate the light, it's it's integrating like an awareness. Now it's like, oh, wait, I am the source of light. I am love. I am God. I am goddess. I am God, the son of God, the daughter of God. I am the child of earth. I like that's me. That's you. So when you're just being you and you're complete 100% you Ness, you're literally being your source that gives off a frequency and an energy of light that is radiant and people are attracted to it because it feels good. It feels safe. It feels like love. It feels like acceptance. 
because that's what source is. You know, it's non-judgmental. There's no fear in, in the source. Love. Um, ah. Um, ooh, yeah. Roberta's saying that she drinks cinnamon and strains it out. Yes, cinnamon is not only is cinnamon anti-inflammatory, but it also balances out blood sugar. So cinnamon is really good to have. So like if you have cinnamon tea, say in the morning with fruit, then you can get your fruit in in the morning so that it digests easier. But you can also have the cinnamon either on it or drink the tea and your blood sugar stays stable. So you don't get like that big sugar rush. Um, yeah, mu music is so soothing. Music is definitely a way to soothe and, and to feel like the source, the light, you know, um, Robert is asking what a natural, what is a natural cleanse? I'm about to do a cleanse. It's all plant-based. Um, it's a 30 day cleanse. The first 10 days you start to remove the animal products, sugar, alcohol, tobacco, caffeine. The second 10 days you are in the whole time you're taking like supplements and like a lot of amino acids and proteins and things to get your gut health back and move the glyphosate, the chemicals and toxins in your body. And the second 10 days then you start to add a parasite and colon cleanse. So it really gets out all the shit. And then the last 10 days, you just go like into drinking these green juices and you're still eating the whole time. The second and, th the second and third 10 days, you're just eating um, super duper healthy foods, not a lot of other things so that you can actually fully cleanse the body out. So all that trauma, drama stuff that's stuck in our physical body that actually physically makes us feel heavy, it helps to remove that. So if you're doing your spiritual work and you do a cleanse at the same time, you're going to amplify the results. Um, <laughs> JC says, do a swift, quick run naked in the full moonlight, but make sure your neighbors are asleep and you have a good story ready if the police come. Blame spiders. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, um, that's a really great, um, encouragement. And I know how this is going to sound and I don't care because I got a couple minutes left. You know, if you can be naked and I know I say it funny, I'm very aware because people point it out. If you can be naked in nature, try it. It's freeing. You know, if you ever swam naked, you feel what your body parts feel like you feel free. It's very liberating. It's very energizing. You know, when you're not covered with plastic clothes, <laughs> you know, be in the moonlight. The light of the moon is so bright because it's refracting light from the sun. It's a way to get sunlight in the dark. It's filtered, obviously. It's not as, as potent, but it's a way that you can actually like look at it with your eyes. You can moon gaze. Great ways. Great ways. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, Roberta, antibiotic, uh, pre-antibiotics? You mean pro you mean pre and probiotics? Um, because this the cleanse that I'm gonna be doing like re reintroduces new colonies of all the good bacteria that our gut needs. Um, so I'm wondering if that's yeah, gut colonies, good stuff. And that's the thing, you know, integrating the life that I am, like, it means for real, y'all taking care of your body, you know, like whatever habit you have, is it a habit or is it a ritual? You know, like, is it a habit because you're addicted or is it a habit because you're mindlessly treating your body a certain way? You know, do you treat your temple with, um, you know, with love and devotion with intention and care? Do you caress yourself and, and be kind and compassionate to you? You know, or are you harsh and unkind and sterile? You know, just ask yourself these things. And if you were free to live a loved life with you, what would that look like? What would it feel like? And start to explore these things. Explore them with your breath, through your ways of being. And like Brandy said, maybe, you know, Check out a nude, a nude feet, <laughs> you know, get some friends together. They don't care if they see your body parts naked. Who cares? Go through those 
world wants with the body, right? Um, but let the light in. Let the light in that you are. Let it let let the light that you are out. You know, see the light, the love, the source that all is. See it everywhere you turn, if you can. It's my encouragement. And you will integrate literally the light into all that you are and all that you do and all that you say. And the world is just a more fun, peaceful place. That's what I say. And I know I'm running out of time, but I want to read this card. Oh, it's the daughter card. Okay, I'm going to read this real quick and then I'm going to hop off. Okay, it says, daughter, your tears are holy water. Do not follow grief or regret because you've been hurt. You hurt because it meant something. Your emotions are calling for a higher guidance from your intuition. Making excuses for your pain will only continue perpetuating the pain in an endless cycle. Allow yourself to fully experience your wide ranging and vast emotions and then let it go. Spiritual hygiene comes in the form of forgiveness, first to yourself and then to others. Sometimes being courageous means releasing the need to hold onto control. As you step into your valor and truth, you grant permission for others to do the same. Honor the sacred waters that have cleansed your face and your vision. Use them to rehydrate your soul by, re by fueling your imagination and creativity. Resist the receptive impulse to allow others to influence your raw and natural instincts. Boom. Drew that at the top of the hour. That was perfect. Okay. I love you all so much. I'm so happy that y'all hopped on here with me. I am so grateful. I love what you shared. Very inspiring, very supportive for me and my health path of all things life. So keep taking care of yourselves and each other and know how loved you are. Know how much love you are. And I will see you all tomorrow. We can do something creative at 10. Okay.